Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Shnai's Brachos. We are uh, part of Baruch HaHavet Kolel in San Diego. We're very happy to have everybody listening and to be joining us. Yesterday we um, finished the first parak um, of Brachos, Shnai's, and um, we're going to be going on to the second parak today, making a lot of, um, making a lot of uh, Baruch Hashem, we're making a lot of uh, headway into um, to learning and, and getting a lot done. Um, I would like to, as usual, dedicate this to my great grandfather, um, David Yetzel, whom I named after David Yetzel Levi. He's a Shaman Malia from these uh, Mishnahis. And also for Rufu Shalema, from my, my grandfather, um, Levi Yehuda, uh, Levi, um, who's uh, who's been uh, you know in a wheelchair for many years, but you know hopefully he's getting better every day. So may uh, may this learning um, help him recover and have a full recovery. Okay, so the first chapter in Brachos dealt with um, Shema, the Zmanim, the times of when to say it, um, why we say it, why we say it, how to say it. Now we're going to speak about the proper etiquette, the proper way to act during the Shema. Um, we're going to speak about um, in this chapter. We're going to speak about uh, a little bit more about the Shema. Um, and and we're going to get just more clarity on what it means to say Shema. Uh, if we could say it when uh, when we're when we're working, when we're big, we're too busy, you know. Um, but uh, last chapter we dealt a lot with the, the fundamentals, and now we're going to be dealing with a lot of other you know interesting halachas and things along that line. So let's start with Mishnah Aleph on Perik Beis. Of brachos, hayakayre b'tayre v'gilzman amikra. So it comes. So somebody, somebody is reading the Torah. He's doing shnayim mikra. You know, we have a mitzvah to do um, to do to, to read the, the the parsha every single week with uh, with uh, commentary, Rashi, maybe uncles, whatever. Um, I guess there's different ways you can do it. Some people can do it. We'll just read it in English. If the, if uh, you know, as long as you understand the. Uh, you understand the translation. You understand what's going on in the parsha. So say somebody's, you know, he's he's doing his daily uh, his daily reading of the Torah. He's just reading it. He just and, that, and he happens to come across. He happens to come across um, the the reading of Shema. Uh, because again, we said that Shema is uh, is der It comes from it's a mitzvah coming from the Torah, and it's actually in the Torah. It's in the Chumash. You can find it in the Chumash. Um, so, um, so, 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 so again, so somebody is reading it, and he comes across the passage of Shema, and also at that same time, this person is, the time has come, as we said last week, as we said last time, we said, you know, uh, when uh, when it's either the Kohanim come to eat their truma. Or we're able to tell the difference between blue and white. The time has come now to, to, to say Shema, and the person is reading the Shema. It just so happens to be he's reading the Shema at the same time that 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 uh, the son of you know he say he gets up early, and he wants to go do a little you know Torah reading, and he wants to you know make sure to read the parsha, but he does it before davening. Uh, so so and then all of a sudden you see he realizes the Shema the Shema is in here. So he wants to have a double, he wants to, you know, two, two birds with one stone. He wants to say the Shema and be Mekayim, the mitzvah of saying the Shema. I mean, he doesn't want to just read it as, as you know, he was just reading the Parsha, just trying to understand the Parsha. He also wants to use that as an opportunity to now be Mekayim, to be fulfilled the mitzvah of Shema at that time, at the proper time in the morning and at, uh, well, either if it's in the morning or at night. The time, again, the time is, uh, the time of, the time has come to say the Shema. So what? So what can he do? How does it work exactly? Can he be? Can he use this opportunity as a time to say the Shema uh, and to be makayim the mitzvah to fulfill the mitzvah at its proper time? Or because he's doing this in a time that's not set for saying the Shema, it just happens to be that he's reading the Torah portion and the Shema comes up. Do we, like, do we can we say that that it's fine that he's he can fill it or it's not good it has to be with an intention to be saying the Shema 
Im kevan liboy yotze, the im lav lo yotze. So the answer is like this, that if he had in mind, and this goes with the principle in learning in, um, in, in Gemara and all, all around different places, that your intention when you do a mitzvah has to be the intention of doing a mitzvah. Because, um, because if not, if you just unintentionally did, did a mitzvah, you know, say you were on sukkis, you didn't know what sukkis was, and you just picked up a lula of an estrogen or whatever, and you just happen, happen to, you know, take all, you know, all the four, you know, species together and just, you know, shake and whatever, and, and uh, be in a sukkah, and different people have been hugging to be in a sukkah, not to be in a sukkah, to, to shake it, but um, the point is, is that can you do a mitzvah with the, not intending to do the mitzvah? Um, so it seems like from, from what this Tana and this Mishnah teaches is that it has to be with the intention. Im kevan liba yotze. If you're, you were focused, if you were, um, if you were looking to, you know, do the mitzvah and you saw, oh, Shema is coming and you said, okay, Shema is coming and I'm reading and I want to be Makai the Mitzvah, so I'm having in mind to say to myself, okay, the Shema will be, uh, the Shema that I'm saying right now will go towards the davening that I will be doing later. Obviously, later in the davening, should also say Shema, but that's just for different reasons. But um, but here we see that um, you're able to be behind the mitzvah, able to fulfill the mitzvah while just you know stam just reading the, the Torah portion. Um, and if you im lav, if you didn't have this intention, then you'll have a problem and you will not be able to be behind the mitzvah. Which is, I guess, not a problem. It's just you know you could say it after you read it, but. Uh, you have to have in mind, according to this Tana, you have to have in mind when you do a mitzvah to to be doing that mitzvah. And I believe uh, he is speaking on a general term because there are those who say that uh, mitzvah doesn't need uh, it's, it's tzricha. It's really a mitzvah tzricha kavana. A mitzvah needs uh, kavana, you know, to be uh, to be centered in, to be focused on that mitzvah. Um, but this this Tana holds that you need to have it on your mind. But there are some who hold that it doesn't need to be directly on your mind. So that's the first part of this Mishnah. The next part, the Prakim Shayam and Pneha Kavud, Omeshiv. And so now we're going to speak about something completely different. Um, could be that it connects. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't see that it connects over here. But now we're going to be speaking about somebody who is in the middle of saying the Shema. Again, we're, now we're done with him uh, reading. He's not reading anything from the Chumash before he was reading from the Chumash. Now he's actually doing the mitzvah. And he finishes the first paragraph of Shema, um, which is the first one of Shema Yisrael, and then he and he's about to start by He's about to start the next part, but he stops, and all of a sudden, somebody comes up to him, his father, his mother, his rabbi, somebody with respect that he should be giving respect to. In fact, uh, Allah is you shouldn't even stand up for them when they walk in the room. Um, you can't answer back. Different thing, you know, people that have honor. That you need to honor somebody like that comes up to this person. The prokim, this means he's in between. He's in between the because we're going to see soon that we speak. There's a difference between uh, the prokim or the emtza. The prokim is in between the the passages of Shema. So he so he finished the first one. He hasn't started the second one yet, and and all of a sudden somebody comes up and says hello, his rabbi, whatever. Can he answer? Can, is he allowed to say to the rabbi uh, Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi? Uh, you know, Shalom Aleichem uh, to his father. You know, his father asks him, "Can you do something for him?" Can, um, well, actually, uh, I won't get into that because uh, it's a little more complicated. If he if he can go physically to go do something for him, here we're just talking about a little hello, uh, hello, how are you? Whatever, responding back. Um, so, so Shalom Lepnei Kavod Umeishiv. So, when it comes to somebody of Kavod, you're allowed to answer back. Uh, you're allowed to greet. You're allowed to greet them and answer and answer back. Uh, for you're about, you're about to answer back to them if they come if you they come to you and you know they're about to say something you're allowed to say hello first uh, if they if they again this is not halacha or ma'is this is not what we paskin because we said in the beginning of the mishnayos that we don't paskin from mishnayos I'm just we're just learning simply what the what the translation is what what the what the what the mishnah says if you want to know the actual halacha what you actually are supposed to do and what extent can you go to you know, get out of, uh, you know, get out of, maybe you don't want to talk to him, you want to be really, you know, machmer, maybe you want to be meiko, and, and, you know, just speak, whatever, you have to go to the Mishnah Brua, you know, the Shulchan Al-Kharab, and the Rabbi Yosef, and all these 
different uh, modern day post but this but here we see from this Mishnah that yes you can um, you can interrupt in between the, the paragraphs uh, for, for the sake of honoring specifically honoring your father mother whatever. it can't just be your friend we'll see later why I'm saying this but it can't just be your friend it can't just be you know a jan the janitor is walking by you and say hey you know it's obviously nice to say hello to the janitor but you know uh, he's somebody that's less less um, that's not you don't have to give honor to it's not somebody that you're halakhically obligated to give honor to so therefore you don't need to um, you don't need to stop what you're doing and you continue on to the next passage well the emsa so now we're going to speak about you're smack in the middle of saying the Shema you, you haven't finished the first pa the first the first paragraph or even the second paragraph let's say you, you you're in the middle of the second paragraph and you're right in the middle of it and somebody co and somebody comes up to you so according to this, this um, Tana, this uh, this opinion, and we'll see a different opinion next. Uh, this is words of these are all, all Rameyer that we said so far. So Rameyer said again, between paragraphs, you finish the whole paragraph, you can do it for cover. If it's in between, if it's like umamish, you're like really just started the Shema or you're in the middle of it, and you haven't finished a paragraph yet then you can't do it for the sake of cover. You can't, some, if your father comes in, you just, you know, be nice, you know, a little uh, whatever, you know, tell him, whatever, you know, like point to the page. You can, for that, you cannot do it. Um, but uh, when it comes to somebody that you fear, maybe somebody is going to hurt you, you know, he says, if you don't answer me, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, you know, take, you know, do whatever, do something bad to you. Um, that person... That per, that person that confidence that you can respond to if it's a it's if it's a life if it's a if it's out of fear, you're allowed to greet you're allowed to greet him or fear. maybe it's you know uh, a guy that you've always had ar you know, ar arguments with and he's walking by you and you just you know you're afraid that if you don't say hello and you don't try to make it better you know th then then he's just gonna think you're upset at him and he won't real maybe he won't realize you're saying shema so therefore according to this again this is just according to this. That you can say uh, hello to him, but 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 when it, but if we're, if we're not in between, if we're we didn't finish the paragraph again, we're speaking about we didn't finish the paragraph. We're in between the we were like we just started to say the Shema and we're like we're, we're still worthy. We're still you know saying it with our mouth and and we haven't finished yet. That's only applies to somebody that you're afraid of, a person that you would have to give cover to. They they don't um, according to Reb Meir. This is the first opinion. Reb Meir says you don't have to. Uh, you don't when it comes to somebody out of cover. Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda has a different approach. So, so, so Rabbi Huda says when you're in the middle, your beemza, you you have this is not again. This is there's the prokim is that you finish the whole a whole passage and then somebody came up to you, so you're not really saying anything anymore. You just just finished and you you know looking and somebody comes up to you, but. But again, we're speaking now about that the Shema is said that you just started saying it. So he says for Yira, you can say, and for Kavod, you can say. So he goes a step further, and he says that if your father, mother, uh, rabbi, the, the rebbe that you have, your, you know, the Rosh Hashi, whatever, uh, you know, somebody out of honor they have to give honor to, Rabbi Huda goes a step further and says you can even give these people Kavod for, for, um, you can say in the Be'emtza, in the middle, that you just said Shema, you can also stop for them. So he says, Yira you can stop for, and for Kavod, or somebody that you're afraid of, and so, and somebody that you have to honor. Shoyom l'pnei ha-Kavod, and this is Rabbi Yehuda finishes now. Shoyom l'pnei ha-Kavod, u'moyshev shalom l'chol adam. So he goes, and he says, even more, so he says. Uh, he says, "Umeshiv mipnei kavod because of kavod." Shalom mipnei kavod. So he, he, he's allowed to. You know, the person comes up to him, uh, and and um, okay. So sorry. Now now we're talking about prokim. Okay. So he was first said that you started the shema. You're in the middle of the shema. You haven't finished the first the first uh, paragraph yet. Um, if somebody comes up out of yira and out of kavod, now he says that the prokim. Before, let's just remind you, Rameyer said before that the only person you can stop for between paragraphs, meaning you finish the whole paragraph of Shema, 
and you're on Bahaya, you're about to start Bahaya Im Shemoa. Rabbi, um, Rabbi Meir said that only person, uh, your father, mother, blah, 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 you can you can stop for, um, and for and for year or somebody that you somebody that you uh, feared, um, but but here, Rabbi Yehuda goes even further and says that you can stop for anyone, for the whole Adam, for every single person, any person that comes up to you and says hello. Rabbi Yehuda holds. That you're allowed to stop. You're allowed to say hello back to them, or uh, or uh, yeah, you're you're allowed to reply, or you're allowed to say hello to them or reply. Um, that's a step further of Rameir, because Rameir said no, only somebody out of honor that you have to give honor to a father, a mother, a rebbe. Um, those people you can stop. Those people you can you when when you finish the first paragraph, and uh, you can and you're going on to Bahim Shemo, You haven't said anything yet. Says Rabbi Yehuda, you can also say for for any person. It doesn't matter with cover. That was the first Mishnah in uh, in Brachas. Aleph. Now we're going on to Beis. Elohim bein haprakim, bein bracha reshayna l'shnia, bein shnia l'sh l'shma, bein shma l'danoshir v'hayim shemora. So now we're speaking about what does it mean? We spoke about uh, we spoke about the about saying a passage and, and stopping in the middle. But the question is, is um, I said, I, I quoted and said that Shema is the first passage and Bahaya Im Shemoa is the second passage. However, we're going to now speak about why isn't Bahaya Im Shemoa first and why isn't Shema first? And what about Vayomer? Why exactly is the order of the Shema in the order that it is? So it's we say we say over here that that Shema that and we're giving we're basically telling you we're telling you now that this is the order of the Shema that um, the first blessing of uh, Shema of Ben Shema le v'hayim Shemoa Ben v'hayim Shemoa le v'yomer Ben v'yomer le emes v'yatsi those are so the the Mishnah clarifies and says those are the Three parakim of oh, well the fourth it counts the fourth one as the MSV Yotziv, but we're going to speak about that in a second. Rabbi Huda, well, I'll, say, I'll say that quickly. Rabbi Huda, I'm Rabbein Viyomer le MSV Yotziv lo yafsid. There you you may not interrupt because those two uh, he doesn't he counts those as um, he counts those as together. As you have to, when you say Viyomer, um, you finish that parak of Viyomer and you go into the MSV Yotziv. Those actually have to be together. That says that, that's what Rabbi Huda says. But here we're speaking about um, those that when we spoke about between Bain Parakim, this is what we were talking about. We were talking about Shema. You stopped and you said Shema. Vahayim Shemoa. You stopped and you said you said that whole thing. Bain Vahaya Vahayim Shemoa and Le Viyoma. And then Vayomer Le Emes Vayotziv. And Yehuda says no. Le Emes Vayotziv. That you don't need to. Uh, you're 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 not allowed to interrupt in between those. But so basically they're clarifying from the last Mishnah. What it means, bein parakim, because in the last mishnah, all we really said was the parakim shayom mipnei kava the meishir. We said that between those parakim, between these paragraphs, um, we we you're allowed to stop and say for somebody who was kava the yira, but we weren't specific which paragraphs. We didn't say, um, you know, between this or this. I happened to tell you, I uh, jumped the gun over there and I told you which one it was. But here, this mishnah is clarifying that shema. Vahayim Shemoa and Vayomer, those are the paragraphs that we're talking about in that order. And Rabbi Yehuda says that the last one, the Emes Vayatziv, um, Rabbi Yehuda says that, um, that that one you cannot interrupt for Kavod or for Yira because of the fact that it's, um, it's something that needs to be said together. Fine. Amar Rabbi Yehoshua ben Karcha. Lama Kadma Shema le Vahayim Shemoa. Why is it that Shema comes before Vahayim Shemoa. Again, we this this Mishnah specifically is going to speak about why is it that Shema comes before this paragraph and this paragraph before that paragraph. It, it's a clear question that Rabbi Yeshua ben Karka is asked. Kabel So his answer is the reason that Shema. Let's take a look at the paragraph of Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokin Hashem Lachad. So 
So what we're, what's going on here is that we're speaking a lot about Hashem and accepting Hashem as our king. And Hashem, and it's, it's, mo, it's mainly about Hashem. It's not about what he said as much as what Hashem is. Which means, according to this uh, mission over here, is that first, the reason Shema comes before Bahayim Shemoa is Ol Machush Shemayim, Tehila. When it comes to Ol Machush Shemayim, the yoke, when you, you know an animal has you know, the bearing that it's holding on its back, uh, you know, the, we're accepting that that yoke on us, the, the Ol Machush Shemayim, that's the first thing before anything. Hashem is king, Hashem is one, Hashem is echad. That is what we're accepting first when we say Shema. That's why Shema comes before Bahayim Shemor, Bahachar Kahi Kabel Lov Al Mitzvah. And now let's read Bahayim Shemor, Bahayim Shemor, Tishmil El Mitzvah. The Pasuk says, El Mitzvah, your Mitzvah. So the first one about Shema was speaking about Ol Machu Shemayim, and the second was was speaking about Yikabel Lov Ol Mitzvah. We're talking about accepting Hashem's mitzvah. So first we're talking about accepting that Hashem is just existing. Hashem exists, you, there's nothing other than Hashem, and that's it. And then, the second Pasuk, we speak about Hashem's mitzvahs that He gave us on our Sinai. Hashem, Hashem uh, gave us these mitzvahs, and we accept them, and we did. So the second paragraph is talking all about the mitzvahs, and the first one is talking all about Hashem. So that's why, uh, according to this Mishnah, why we're saying um, why we're saying Shema and then Vahaya Im Shemoa. Okay, and now the next question is Vahaya Im Shemoa Le Vyoimer? Question mark. Meaning, now why is it that Vahaya Im Shemoa, which is the second paragraph, and and Vayoimer are are um, are why are they put together like that? Why are they next to each other? Maybe Vayomer should go before Vahayim Shemoa. Let's see, let's see the answer. Noyeg b'cho b'yoyim uvelayla. Vayomer eno noyeg ala b'yoyim. So when it comes to Vahayim Shemoa, tish el mitzvah, asher noyichim etzah v'chayim ala v'chayim ala v'chayim ala All these different mitzvahs that we're talking about. Noyeg b'yoyim uvelayla. The mitzvahs in Vahayim Shemoa talks all about the mitzvahs that we do at night and day. The mitzvah, of, uh, specifically the mitzvah, and let's go over here, v'lamadetem uh, oisam uh, es The mitzvah of learning Torah, which is what we're doing right now, is something that's v'agisa yom v'layla, it's a post in a different process, but we have to be learning it night and day. It's a mitzvah that's the whole entire day. So therefore, v'hayim shemoa, and, and it says in, in here, it talks about mitzvahs that we do day and night. Therefore, this came before Vayomer, which only speaks about, the only mitzvah that it truly speaks about is tzitzis. And, and we said the other day in the different, a different Mishnah that it also speaks about uh, taking us out of Mitzrayim. Um, and, when they, and then we had an argument if it was a mitzvah uh, at night or if it was a mitzvah at day. And we had, but, um, but anyways, we, have, we see over here all the reasons why the Mish, uh, why the Shema was put in its place, in the proper place. It wasn't just, you know, hash, you know, the, when they put it together, okay, we'll put this one here and that one there, that one. There was a reason for each one. And let's just go over it again quickly. The Shema, the reason Shema is there first, and that's the first one we say, is Ol Machu Shemayim, because we're accepting Hashem as our king before anything, before... We even say, you know, we want your mitzvahs, we want any... Really, I have a personal question on that, because we said Nasa Venishma, um, which it seems like really we are more, we should be more concerned about the mitzvahs. If, uh, this is my question, I don't have an answer, but uh, maybe somebody can, you know, you know, come and get involved and give me an answer. But why is it that, uh, uh, why is it that they say that Ol Ma'achu Shemayim comes before Ol... Uh, well, not all, but uh, uh, all of our uh, key uh, to be mekabel the mitzvahs. Really, we should be mekabel the mitzvahs. I know this. I'm just thinking. Then we should be mekabel Hashem. I mean, I guess I guess I understand. You could say because Hashem really is, but He's really that's the really the first thing that we should be concerned about is Hashem, and the second thing is His mitzvahs. But I feel like it's like a Jewish thing. Like we we care so much about His mitzvahs. Like that should be first. But that's my personal question. 
But the, the Mishnah says that the reason is because Omachu Shemayim Techila, that comes first, the Achachachi Kaba, I love all mitzvahs, but then the, to be Makabal, the mitzvahs, and then, the, and then, Noyeg Beyoyim of Alayla, Inu Noyeg Ela Beyoyim. And so the last two, when it comes to Bahayim um, Shamoa and Vayomer, we speak with those, the reason those two are there in our place is because one has a mitzvah of learning Torah all day and night. It's a mitzvah that it applies day and night. And in Vayomer, we only have a mitzvah of tzitzis with only which only applies during the day. So that's the end of Bayes. Um, I'm very glad uh, anybody who's listening is following along. Or, we're make we're 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 already on uh, on on base, and um, I would like to I would like to thank you for listening and go to to share this around to everybody anybody who would like to join us for this journey of going through Mishnayos to go to nesatorah.org uh, dot org and uh, to share with everyone and to make sure that uh, it's being spread around because we want everybody to learn as much as they possibly can. So thank you very much and have a great day.